So what we have obtained so far is that the first game was possible, the second game was impossible, and what would be the ultimate question that we can ask? Well, let me ask you this. If you can free a smaller prison, can you free a larger prison? Not necessarily. This is what we see here. But if you cannot free a smaller prison, can you free a larger prison? Certainly not. So really, we are after the minimal inescapable prisons. So that would be the ultimate question that mathematicians would like to answer. Starting with one clone in position 1-1, one, one, for which barbed fences can the clones escape and for which they cannot? Or a better question would be which are the minimal, inescapable barbed fences? Can this question be answered exactly? Find a classification, a list of all minimal, inescapable fences? Well, th that is very hard and it involves some computer calculations. There was a paper called Pebbling a Chessboard by Chang, Graham, Morrison, and Odlisko from a couple of decades ago. So in this paper, they talk about M of K, so they give names to things. So this is the family of our minimal, inescapable barb fences with K cells. So they need to fix that K in order to have a function. And let f of k be the actual number of such minimal inescapable barbed fences. Not the list, but the number of them. So now you have two things, m of k and f of k. And so in their paper, they try to do several things. They try to characterize the minimal inescapable barbed fences. They try to calculate f of k, but that's relatively hard. So what they do is they give a polynomial algorithm for recognizing such minimal, inescapable barb fences. What does this mean? It means that there is this polynomial behind the computer algorithm. And so if you want for the computer to recognize if a specific prison with 10 cells is escapable or not, you take this 10, you plug it into your polynomial, and that will tell you how much at most you will wait for your computer to spit a definite answer, is capable or not. So how much the computer thinks about answering one way or another is given by this polynomial. And finally, instead of trying to calculate exactly the number of prisons with K cells that are inescapable, they determine its asymptotic growth. So their result says that f of k, this function, grows approximately as an exponential function, c times gamma to the k minus 1, where c and gamma are these two constants. And it's a funny thing what constants they are. They're just roots of some cubic polynomials. So the answer is pretty general. It does not give you an exact formula. But it does tell you something about the growth of those uh, inescapable prisons. Every time you increase by one the number of cells, the total number of inescapable minimal prisons increases by this gamma. Is the shape of the prison always that sort of triangle, that wedge, or do they, is, this, is that not a factor? No, that is not. In fact, uh, you should have at most one such inescapable prison. What we had in our example, and so that was an inescapable prison. Now, if you have a larger inescapable prison of that shape, that's not going to be a minimal inescapable prison. So a large inescapable prison might be of a different shape. It has to be of a different shape. So for instance, something like that might be another inescapable prison, but definitely not something which contains our previous inescapable prison. Why are they doing this? Because it's fun. 
once you solve a particular problem, the original one, which in itself was so much fun, you don't stop there. You don't want to stop the fun. Mathematicians have fun the whole time, especially when they're doing research. That's why they're into this profession. They love it. But you get, you get paid. Like, people are paying you money. You're just being paid to have fun. Along the way, when you investigate such problems, you can actually open new areas of mathematics and you can solve some other related problems or you will find relationships between different areas of mathematics. For instance, if you read this paper, you will find out that it invokes some advanced concepts from many, many different areas of mathematics. For instance, recursive relations. Perhaps you have heard of the Fibonacci sequence. Well, that's given by a recursive relation. Generating functions are used to find direct formulas for these recursive sequences. Functional analysis. Well, that's beyond real analysis, which is a course for mathematics majors. Partial derivatives. That's from multivariable calculus, something that uh, students might take their first or second year in college. Algebraic numbers. And finally, if you read that paper, you will come up with so-called Ramanujan type continued fractions. And you have to Google Ramanujan to find out more about his fascinating biography. No, you don't. Biography. You, can you can watch it on number five. Ah, OK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's amazing that this type of a variety of mathematics is provoked by a simple problem, our original chessboard problem, where we started with three clones and that simple cloning rule, trying to escape a prison. So originally you look at this game and you have no clue that so much and so advanced mathematics and so diverse mathematics is behind its solution.